Hey, Chrissy, how are you? Hey, Vicki, I'm okay, I guess. But to be honest, I'm a little worried about the 2024 election. Same. I've been really trying not to think about it. Guess all we can do is vote and hope for the best. Yeah, I always vote. Did someone say vote? <laughs> Hi, Lars. Yeah, we were just saying we're both pretty anxious about the November election. I hear you, but the best way to cure anxiety is to take action. Oh, we, we always vote. vote. You know, I actually read that more people voted in the last presidential election than in the last 100 years, 66%. Well, that's encouraging, but that's still a lot of people who aren't voting. In a lot of places, the law is actually being changed to make it harder to vote by placing voter ID requirements, limiting early voting, having fewer polling places, and less mail drop-off boxes, among other things. It's especially troubling in historically underrepresented communities where a lot of black and brown people live. And some states make it even harder for college students to vote. Well, that's not okay. Not okay at all. But we don't have to sit back and accept voter suppression. Have you guys heard of UU the Vote? I think so. Sounds familiar? Well, the UUA launched it nationwide in 2020, and UU congregations to get involved with Get Out the Vote campaigns. A lot of people in UUSS participated in 2020, and in 2022, UUSS was actually named one of the couple of Good Trouble congregations. We plan to do it again this year. What exactly did we do? Well, it's funny you should ask. Just so happens that we have a UU Vote event happening right now. Let's go check it out. So some of these folks are writing postcards and painting ro rocks. Does anyone want to say wh why they're doing that? I participate in UU the Vote because even though I'm not old enough to vote, I like to know that I'm making a difference. When I have a question about the postcards I help write, my mom always answers. It makes me feel important when I do the postcards. It feels like the right thing to do. That's awesome, Lila. Anyone else? Yes, well, I'm helping to get out the vote because so many people in the past have fought for my vote to my right to vote. I'm almost at 100 postcards. You go. I'm writing postcards to get out the vote because we need to increase our school funding. And please, while you're at it, use some of that money to make our school lunches better. I'm painting rocks because I like to place them around my town and in, in areas where people will see them and be reminded to vote. It's a fun way I can participate. I always go vote with my mom. We like all early voting. Well, that's great, you guys. It's so amazing that you're so involved. All, I guess, maybe one. I mean, what is it with you boomers? You can't get off your cell phones? Excuse me. I am texting people encouraging them to vote. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It is so easy to do this through you, you, the vote. I have already texted 11,400 people. Did you say that's amazing? There's something for everyone. Some people donated, some people donated letter and postcard stamps. Other people knocked on doors to get out the vote or set up tables around the community to get help register new voters. Some people are so committed to our democratic elections that they even served as poll workers. Interesting. I'd be willing to write postcards and maybe text, but I don't know about talking to voters. I have pretty strong views on who I want to win, and I hate getting into debates with people over what they, who they should vote for. Same. I, I hate debating politics. People get angry. Sometimes even friends, neighbors, family, they can turn against you when they disagree about politics. I know what you mean. I've been avoiding my mother-in-law for the past eight years. Wait, doesn't she live upstairs from you? She does, but when I see her coming... <laughs> I could use one of those so I can avoid my brother. But I thought you two agreed on politics. 
Oh, we do, but we just can't agree on the best TV show of all time, The Sopranos or The Wire. It comes up literally in every conversation. Oh, that's rough. Well, let me tell you something. You, You, The Vote takes no position on the best TV show of all time or the best candidate or political par party. We partner with organizations like the Center for Common Ground and reclaim our vote to get more people out and voting. As a faith community, we just want all people to show up and have the right to vote and have the courage to show up and vote on election day. We are totally nonpartisan. Okay, well, I think I could get on board with writing some postcards. Awesome. Well, according to research by Yale University, getting a handwritten postcard increases voter participation by 3%. And one tax banking campaign found that voters who are considered least likely to vote often voted at a rate nearly three times higher than similar voters who didn't receive a tax, even if they don't respond to your tax. It may not sound like a lot, but it can swing voters to vote in one direction or the other in tight races. But you know what's even more effective than writing letters or texting? What? what? Calling voters on the phone and canvassing so you can talk to them in person. Hmm, I don't know. It sounds kind of intimidating talking to strangers. Do people even answer the door or phone? Sure, they do. I don't know. I've never done it. Listen, I was nervous when I first did it, but now canvassing voters is actually my favorite form of voter outreach. How about we practice? I'll pretend to be a UU the Vote volunteer. Well, you can pretend to be a potential voter. Let's start with you, Chrissy. Okay, I guess. Knock, knock. Is Chrissy home? That's me. Hi, my name is Lars and I'm a volunteer with the Center for Common Ground. We're a nonpartisan organization working to increase voter participation. This is an extremely important election and an opportunity to make your vote, make your voice heard. Can I count on you to vote this November? I think so, yeah. Great. What's your plan to vote? Are you planning on mailing in your ballot, early voting, or voting on election day? I'm not sure. Well, we're encouraging people to vote early if that works for you. Okay, maybe I'll do that. Do you need a ride to the polls? No, I have a car. Great. Do you know the early voting dates and where your polling location is? I'm not sure. Well, I can give you all that info right now, or I can give you a name of a website where you can enter your zip code and you can get the info that way. What would you prefer? I'll go on the website. What is it? Okay. It's vote.org. Hold on. Let me get a pen and write it down. Fantastic. And do you think you can get three family or friends to vote? No, I can try, I guess. That's awesome. Any questions? Yes, I actually do. What is it? In your opinion, what's the greatest TV show of all time, The Sopranos or The Wire? Very funny. It's your turn, Vicky. Let's try calling a voter now. Okay. Ring, ring. Hi, can I speak to Vicky? That's me. What do you want? Hi, my name is Lars Stahl, and I'm a volunteer with Reclaim Your I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of watching The Sopranos. <laughs> no problem. Is there a better time to call? Sure. Call me in 45 minutes, okay? Okay. And that happens sometimes, and it's not a big deal. It's, not, it's important to not take it personally and move on to the next call. I guess I could give it a try. Me too. Woo. Let's get you, you the vote in 2024. Who's in? One, two, three. You, you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kat Wolfram, and on this Sunday after Independence Day, it's 121 days until the election. We're here today to protect democracy. 248 years after the Declaration of Independence was signed. Despite their beliefs in the virtues of democracy, the founders endorsed limits to voting and left voting restrictions up to the states. In 70, 1776, only white men wealthy enough to own property could vote. Nine out of 13 states required Christian affirmations to vote. Citizens of four states were required to profess their Protestant faith in order to cast their ballots. How many of us here in this circle would have been able to vote in 1776? The 15th Amendment of 1870 granted the black man the right to vote, but as we know, poll taxes, literacy tests, and grandfather clauses were instituted to discriminate and limit voting. Literacy tests were administered at will, different tests at, to different people. The election officials were the ones who decided 
um, who would take the tests and whether persons were then literate or not. In some states, how many beans are in the jar was one of the literacy test questions. The 19th Amendment then gave the right to vote to women in 1920. Um, and then while voter suppression no longer involves beans in a jar, there are many other strategies that they mentioned in the skit, and others include intimidation, undermining the Postal Service, limiting absentee voting, massive purging of voter rolls, gerrymandering, and mass incarceration and felony disenfranchisement. Four states have election day only voting, another form of voter suppression. Transgender folks are particularly vulnerable to challenges around ballot IDs. The John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act would revitalize and modern, modernize the Voting Rights Act after the Supreme Court decision in 2013 removed many voter protections. However, even though it has been introduced in the House and in the Senate, the act has still not come to the floor for a vote in Congress. We cannot rely on that, that legislation to fix voter suppression for 2020, 2024. The recent decision by the Supreme Court on presidential immunity further undermines democracy and represents a gross display of partisanship by six judges on the highest bench in the land. In the book, How the Word is Passed, Clint Smith reminds us that our democracy is not perfect. There are cracks in it. He admonishes us when we despair, threaten to leave the country or not to vote at all. Rather, he calls us not to leave the country, not to give up on democracy, and instead to take action to make democracy better. I'm with Clint Smith. The antidote to despair is action, not escape or detachment. One of the ways to build democracy is to reach out and mobilize disenfranchised voters. As the actors in the skit mentioned, our leaders at UU The Vote joined Center for Common Ground in efforts to educate, mobilize, and empower voters of color in states with high voter suppression. Since 2018, the Center for Common Ground has been working to reimagine what voter mobilization looks like, contacting every registered voter of color who has a chance to cast a ballot with the Reclaim Our Vote campaign, uplifting communities to, by listening to voters, and tailoring the Get Out the Vote campaign to specific community needs. This way of voter, voter mobilization seems like love to me, a liberating love that reimagines flourishing communities with high voter participation. In his May article for the Stanford Social Innovation Review, Love is the Key to Democracy, Michael McPhee describes the way we build a democracy where we the people finally means all the people is by embodying a radical love of all people to acknowledge the inherent dignity and worth of every person and to act in service of, our, of their flourishing. Michael McPhee is the CEO of PolicyLink, a national research and action institute advancing racial and economic equity in U.S. policy and seems like he could be a UU. Voter suppression is designed to create a white democracy in which only wealthy white men hold power, just like in 1776. That's not really democracy. That's white supremacy. And we don't want to go back 300 years. I want a multicultural democracy in which the voices of all people are heard and all can thrive with a focus on those whose needs are often ignored or unimagined. McAfee also goes to describe the curb cut effect, which is particularly appropriate since our front is being, the curbs are being uh, adjusted. Um, a coin, that was a coin, coin a, a term coined by Angela Glover Blackwell in 2017 when the addition of sloping curb walk, curbs to sidewalks was spearheaded by disability activists and culminated in the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. Though the campaign was initially to benefit wheelchair users, it ended up benefiting lots of people, people pushing strollers and luggage, workers pushing heavy carts, uh, bicyclists, roller skaters, skateboarders, and a lot of pedestrians. When people and governments act in service out of love for the particular needs of particular people, the benefits flow outward. Side with Love is a public advocacy campaign that seeks to harness love's power to stop oppression in all forms. Voter suppression is a form of oppression, a way to silence the voices of the young and the marginalized. 
You the Vote is a Side with Love campaign organized specifically to challenge voter suppression. If we can mobilize everyone to vote, all will benefit. As a faith, as a collective, and as individuals, we can take action to repair the cracks in democracy. How? There's a slide with a t-shirt on it, which I'm wearing it, but I'm not going to strip to show you the back <laughs> right here. Um, what we can do is organize, dream, recruit, lead, follow, champion, celebrate, vote, canvas, elevate, build, re invite, include, pray, resist, bless, defund, imagine, abolish, campaign, fundraise, transform, chant, collaborate, redistribute, mobilize, repair, establish, trailblaze, align, and protest. Nothing about worrying in there. With you, the vote, we write postcards and letters, use painted rocks to message people about voting, make phone calls, send texts, canvas, talk to friends and family, and sign up to serve as election workers. If you're writing postcards, add a heart or a smile to the address list every time you finish a letter or postcard, rather than a strike through. Send that spark of love through the universe as we think about love more than just personal. As, but rather, as James Baldwin put it, in the tough and universal sense of quest and daring and growth. It is in this daring spirit, says McAfee, that we must invoke love as the animating force of a flourishing democracy that serves all. I'm not certain how other people are feeling, but sometimes I feel a tightness in my throat and chest. I think it's fear about the upcoming election. I read recently that love is the antidote to fear. So I picked up one of the books from my unread stack, and uh, it's called All About Love by Bell Hooks. Each night to sustain and fortify me, I've been reading a chapter or sometimes a few pages, depending on how exhausted I am, about love. Bell Hooks admits she searched in lots of books for a definition of love that rang true for her. She was relieved to find it in the 1978 book, The Road Less Traveled. Don't know that? Yeah. Um, psychiatrist Scott Peck defines love in The Road Less Traveled as the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another spiritual growth. Seems like another UU sentiment. I liked that book back then, and I think I was a UU before I even knew what that uni Unitarian Universalist existed. The recent revision to UUA's Article 2 is consistent with this philosophy of spiritual growth and the aspirations for a multicultural democracy with love at the center, as illustrated in the new graphic that we have of our shared values designed by Tanya Webster. As we see some white supremacy rising without the hoods, except this past weekend in Nashville, they did have hoods on, and the threat of tyranny ahead of us, None of us will have the right to vote at all if, if all of us don't have the right to vote. As we live through voter suppression among Black, poor, Latino, and young communities, the rest of us are losing our rights. Women, LGBT folks, the environment. We're interdependent. We cannot ignore voter suppression for anyone. Our task with you, the vote, is to challenge voter suppression together. While I'd like to be knocking on doors and talking to people face to face, and it's the most effective means of challenging voter suppression, it's not totally practical. I can touch hundreds of people by writing postcards and letters and making phone calls and texts, but together, as you use in the spirit of justice and equity, we can reach millions of people. Data shows writing postcards and letters, making phone calls, and even texting result in positive outcomes in terms of voter participation. When I read about love and then come here into this circle with all of you, I, and I, the people that I meet on Zoom with other congregations and leaders about you, you the vote, I'm filled with love for this faith. And a hope for humanity. And that builds my courage. It's transformational to be here with you and from you with you across the country. Let's look at our collective journey. Kendra created this great board for us to affirm our commitment to challenge voter suppression. Each 20 postcards or, or letters is a dot with the initials of the writer. 
As we proceed with phone banking and text banking, we'll add dots to represent those as well. If you're working the polls, let us know. You get a star and that will represent your commitment. Join us after the service to write a few postcards and your letters back there together in community and take some home. If writing is not your thing, add stamps. When somebody else writes a postcard, you can add the stamps or you can donate, bring stamps for to donate for the work that we're doing. We've got ice cream and rock painting in the dining room. And as Maddie mentioned in the skit, um, we'll place those rocks in our ro ro Rock the Vote campaign in parks and along pathways as gentle reminders for people to vote. Let's be daring. Let's build a world we dream about in which we all may flourish. I am um, Chris Hamelink. I am very happy to be a member of the UU The Vote team. I'm going to talk about elections mattering. Our elections are very important, especially at the national level. I have voted in every presidential and congregational election since I was eligible to vote. And sometimes I even worked as a volunteer for specific candidates. At times, I was very happy with the election results, and other times, not so much. I was overjoyed with the election of our first black president, and I cried when our first female presidential candidate lost. But of all those many, many elections, none seem as consequential as the upcoming elections this November. We are seeing stark, stark contrasts among several candidates for the presidency and for, for congressional seats. As I consider my votes, here are some things that weigh on my heart. First, women's reproductive rights. Will abortion rights be affirmed once again? Or uh, perhaps a nationwide ban may even be imposed. On the climate crisis, will there be continued international alliances and strong steps taken to address the climate issues? Or will leaders declare that climate change is a hoax and give more support once again to the fossil fuel industries? Border security. Do we want a legislative process to advocate for tough asy asylum standards, more asylum officers and immigration judges, as was proposed in the recent bipartisan legislation that did not pass? Or do we want to see the largest mass deportation in US history and a new travel ban announced against Muslim countries? LGBTQ matters. Will we regularly denounce and um, the attacks and discrimination against this community? Or will there be actions taken, such as banning trans people from the military, having a national ban on hormonal or surgical interventions for trans youth, and recognize that there are only two genders as determined by your birth on international relations. Will we walk away from our alliances and return to isol isolationist policies? Or we, will we continue to strengthen and support organizations such as NATO? And with Ukraine, will we continue to support Ukraine and side with our allies in, in that issue? Or will we simply turn away as they continue to fight this unlawful invasion? The Supreme Court. How do we feel about the recent conservative court decisions that have come down over the past two years and particularly even over the past month? Do we want to see even more conservative judges appointed? Or do we want more moderate justices uh, as two current justices are assumed to be retiring over the next four years. And perhaps most important, protecting democracy. 
Will this election determine whether our democracy will survive and thrive? Or are many of our core democratic principles at risk? Do we want to see the January 6th um, defendants pardoned? The National Guard deployed against citizens who protest in the streets? And do we want to see the Justice Department used to go after political enemies? Democracy can be messy and take time. Strong autocratic rule is very quick. But what do we want? Many of the issues we are facing are policy related. Others go to the core of who we want to be as a people, as a country, as you use. This election provides options that are comparatively rare, both in politics and in life. Total clarity. These issues are why I am working with you, you the vote to ensure that more people do come out to vote. And so we have very important elections coming up, but we also have a big problem, voter turnout. We have been ranked 31st among the top 50 industrialized nations in voter turnout. Um, and in June, 25% of our American voters said they could not stand the thought of voting for either major presidential candidate. Age, convictions, cognitive abilities, and concerns about foreign policy are cited as reasons for their dismay. According to the Washington Post, the largest percentage of these voters reside in swing states that are most likely to determine the outcome of the election. This includes Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. In the 2020 elections, these states had the highest number of third party votes or no votes for president while they did vote for down ballot candidates. These swing states are probably going to determine our presidential election, according to the credible data sources. And meanwhile, Congress is sucking all of the air out of the room with their inertia. This past congressional session has been the second least productive in the past 150 years. All members of the House are up for re-election, and a third of the members of the Senate are also running for office. Most voters tend to simply return their current incumbents to office, which can lead to even further stalemate over the next two years. So both the presidential and the congressional elections can provide big problems. According to Axos last month, the 25% of Americans who don't want to vote for either major party candidate, this has doubled in size since the 2020 elections. This is the most dreaded election in American history, according to our fellow Americans. The big picture, strategists say, is that the presidential race is going to be decided by 6% of the voters in those swing states. Voters may be holding their noses and voting for the candidate they least dislike, or they will vote for third party, or they will simply stay home. This is why you, you, the vote is so important. Through this process, we are going to encourage these voters to show up and vote their values. Kate Kat did a great job describing how you, you, the vote works and how it makes such a difference. We are focusing exclusively on the swing states where we know there are many who are considering just sitting this election out. We're targeting low income non-white voters that have a history of being disenfranchised. Our postcards from UUSS are now all going to voters in Florida. So I think Kat said there are like 2,000 postcards that we are hoping to send to those voters in Florida. Letters are going out to the other swing states. Our phone banking and our text banking will also go 
to swing state voters, and we need your help. These elections are so critical. I am concerned that our very democracy could be at risk. As you use, we respect the dignity and worth of every individual. Yet we see many human rights eroding, and this next election could accelerate this process. Think of our other UU principles, justice, valuing the democratic process, world peace, support for the interdependent web of life. What will this mean for our friends, our children, our grandchildren, and the world if our country takes a strong autocratic turn and additional human rights are endangered? We know that these elections matter to you. Please help us encourage others to show up and to vote. These benediction words are from Omid Safri, a professor of Islamic studies at Duke University. He wrote these words in 2017, and I think they still ring true today. These are dark days, difficult nights of the soul for many of us in America. Perhaps it's not a coincidence that the same dark nights of the soul are witnessing many stars are shining bright. Some of these are old and ancient stars that have been shedding light for what seems to be centuries. Others are newer, bright, bold lights. May you, you the vote, be one of those lights, shining bright and bold throughout the darkness. <laughs>